You're going to write about things which are ugly. You're going to, you're going to write about you know, things which are potentially racist or, or very much outside the mainstream. And you know, there was a real worry about doing an event like tonight, but it would be interpreted in... No, I don't, I don't want to say in the wrong way, because you, you do it in your own way. If, if somebody wants to, you know, completely disagree with... with, with, with no, fair enough. But, um, there, there, there is a slight worry about that, but... The novel goes beyond that. Um, and it, I think anybody who wants to write a novel just to be sensationalist, just to be controversial, is some sort of dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> That's not why you know, the, the, the reason why I wrote Sharp, yeah. and then worried afterwards, <laughs> actually, <laughs> you know, the, the, this could be potentially misconstrued, or it may reflect badly upon myself. I thought, you know, you get the art right first, and then you worry about that. So is that something to, to all three of you, sort of openly, is that something you ever get concerned about, the content being confused? for you, the author, and your personal opinions? Yeah, I think so. Every, I think I always have that moment where I write somewhere and I think, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> do I really want to actually show this to people? Because often, if it occurs to me in the first place to write about it, it's usually something that's maybe quite striking mm. or out of the ordinary or something that I think is a bit strange or a bit, maybe a bit controversial, I don't know. Mm. Otherwise, you wouldn't really take the time to sit and, and think about it. So, yeah, I think I. But then I usually get to a stage where I think, oh, I'll be all right, <laughs> just do it anyway. But yeah, it's what I do think about it. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's an obligation of trust of a reader mm. or, or your perceived reader. But I think literature has to take the cultural risk. But that's what makes it literature. It, it has to. It, it can't just pedal out the same old sort of stuff we get everywhere or the same received opinions. It has to try and capture some of the old that. Mm. And in doing so, there's a certain risk with that. But you've got to do that, I, I find. And but often, the censorious, sort of over the top reaction of, of the things that you fear are from people who probably don't exist. It's from fringe opinion which gets blown out of all proportion. Alan, what about you, Because often it appears that you maybe write from a personal viewpoint. Is that a mistake on my the audience's part sometimes to think that? No, it's because I, I do completely. I wish I could write fiction. Um, I think part of the reason I suspect I'm pretty high up the autistic spectrum is I just find it very difficult to put myself in someone else's shoes. I'm just apparently me and that's it. Um, in, but then quite a lot of... <coughs> I think everything that I say is completely true. But... I, I leave quite a lot out, and probably if it was left up to me, I wouldn't. I'd actually sit for six hours and go, look, here was the actual story, here was everything, underneath, because I want you to know it all, really. So it is a sense of eternal frustration, I've only got an hour tomorrow night. Um, and So I think there's quite a huge difference between uh, written literature in that sense and performance, I think written literature allows for, for many layers at once a performance it's, it's pretty hard not to focus on the persona of the person delivering whatever you're getting. Yeah. I think also in terms of controversial content, with reading something at least you can skim over it if it's traumatised you. Yeah. With a performance it's potentially almost a bit more of an assault even because you can't, unless you walk out you're there and the person's there. So I think that gives a greater sense of responsibility maybe is necessary, but then also uh, have a greater sense of power. I mean, that's, that's interesting as well when we're, we're talking about controversial issues, how we present those issues and um, I noticed with um, particularly Wes and Kate's work that there was quite a few expletives um, and that still seems to be quite taboo um, and I just wonder whether you find when you're performing work you get a different reaction to towards that, that sort of language than you do to people who have been your original audience? Um, yeah. Most of the people I perform to don't give a flying fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's just what we said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, although, it, it's, it's sort of an SP, I don't enjoy using expletives or all these kinds of things in literature. Ideally, I'd like to write pastoral poems about the beauty of nature. 
I feel that there's something more that I should be writing about. Don't stop your couch in, I'm sure. Like, so. well, no, 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 just really ornate sort of things I used to write before I became an urban realist. Romantic and terrifying. <laughs> 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 Maybe your character, maybe he ends up, so I don't know what happens. Maybe he goes to the Lake District and walks around the Lake District. Colleague section. Well, that's the better, isn't it? It may go that way. It may be. The, the plan is to do it the sequel <laughs> every 10 years. But, you know, what happens in 40 years, I don't know. He, he may become very into horticulture. He, he may love that. Hang around in the greenhouse. Maybe. We'll come see us Probably won't. He'll probably be killed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He'll be travel. With anything he can get his hands on, he's, he's, he's mental, yeah. <laughs> um, what was the question? What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about swear words. Oh, it's swear words. I'm falling I'm going to be dead. Um... I've never ever really sworn in front of any family members, so sorry about that. <laughs> but beyond that, no, I don't really care. But it's an aesthetic thing, I prefer not to, but you've got to. I don't, I don't think I ever swear in everyday life. And I, I believe the only expletive I may have used on stage there was a, a, a cunt. <laughs> Someone said to me the other day, actually, I decided a gig at the Old Poetry Festival, which is a lovely, very, very poetry, poetry <coughs> festival. And someone who had been at the gig that I, where I did text sex without realising that it might sometimes be crossing a line in a literature festival said, oh, you said the word comet, old bro. And it was months after, and still, still it hung with her. She so left your mark there. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, and Nick, I wanted to ask you as well, you've just been working on your short story collection. Um, I'm quite curious from a writer's perspective how you've approached that, whether you've had a theme to work around, or you've just so been collating material over the last few years. Yeah, um, I've, it, mostly I've just been, I've been writing lots and lots and lots and then sending out and seeing what gets good feedback and putting it up on my website and seeing what people like and what people don't like and chucking some away and <laughs> rewriting some. Um, and I didn't, I really like the idea of having a theme. I think I probably will write some themed collections. Like I like the idea of having, um, I had an idea of having a room, a hospital room, and having a theme of just people coming through that hospital room and their lives. So I'd love to do something like that.